guys, how are you? This is my drive home. Um, just a couple days from coming out to the south side of Chicago uh, to meeting some of the young men and women who invited me out to south side of Chicago to have a conversation with everybody and to put together our family business. And it caused me to think um, about the age that we're living in right now how it's so very different than, I would say, the early 2000s. In the early 2000s, Lee Iacocca, actually, I don't think he wrote it then necessarily, but I read it then. I read a book by Lee Iacocca, and I recommend it greatly, actually. Um, it, the book was called, Where Have All the Leaders Gone? I think that's what it was. Where Have All the Leaders Gone? And he did an excellent, I think, job of describing the change in guard from how leadership um, in our so -called supposed community leaders, whether they be men or, or, or women, how it has transitioned and how it has changed. And uh, he was he was saying, and for those who don't know Leah, who Lee Iacocca is, uh, he was uh, CEO of Chrysler and a very rich individual. But he was saying that, you know, how the, the quality pool of leadership has, has fallen down tremendously. And why I like the season that we're in right now is I have seen that shift in, a, in, in the 10 to 12 year period of time since I've read that book. I've seen it shift and I've seen um, an entirely new generation take the place, I think, of weak leadership. And uh, a vacuum of leadership is always an opportunity. It's always an opportunity for strong men and women to stand up and to come to the forefront. And I think we've had um, a large vacuum in leadership, especially in, in the Christian church. Oh, we've had such a vacuum. Um, we had a lot of potential. We had a lot of people who had the chance to, you know, truly change people's lives. And uh, the commercialization of fame, um, you know, got them caught up in, in other things. And, but the number one thing that, that I would like us to, to remember or to rely on and what people are calling this awakening is... I am my brother's keeper. I would really like us to, 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 to be there. I would really like us to be there. I am my brother's keeper, meaning this is not the season to become crabs in a barrel. It's not the season for us to be nitpicking uh, the progress of each other because we get very, very good at that. Oh, do we ever get good at that? Whether it be jealousy, whether it be just <laughs> just a just having a we call it in Trinidad bad mind, you just bad mind. It, no matter what it is, we are very caught up in being overcritical of those amongst us who are trying to make differences. And uh, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that guy. All of us have levels of frailty and um, issues that you know we have in our bag, but somehow God lifts us up and allows the greatness in us for those who have greatness in them. I'm just an old country boy, but some of some, some of you who've got greatness in you, God raises you up and lets you uh, participate in a forward move for the people he's trying to he's trying to establish. And I think this is a great time uh, for the communities referred to as the black communities, because there's so many that are called that. I think this is a wonderful season for, for us um, to participate in this season. And I think all, all other communities that participate with us in this season, I think a blessing is coming in your direction if you, if you can participate with us. Um, 
because where this thing started, it started as um, the Jews against the blacks. That's where it started. At least that's where it started for me. But I, I think it's going somewhere else now, personally. I think it's going to the place where it's going to a place of, of empowerment and um, access to people of color where for some reason the stark differences in our access and, and our our power institutions and our our micro regimes of where we can actually call on and say hey you know we're being attacked speak for me we're being attacked represent me i think the disparity has been very clear like for example Three months ago, many of us would have thought that the black representation that we have in sports media would allow those most of those people to speak on our behalf if anything ever came down the pike. We know better than that now. We know much better than that. Three months ago, we would have never have looked at organizations from Jewish people or other people and say, hey, those organizations, the very, the very nature and the way they exist is an affront to us. We would never have thought that. We say, hey, you know, it's a Jewish organization. They got a Jewish organization. We got all these other ones. We would never have thought this too, that the plentitude of black African um, organizations that are that have been running for so long, we never thought how we never saw how impotent they were to addressing um, the the concerns of our own ethnicity, our own identity. We, we were we have been for years uh, mistaken about the footprint that we truly had in the earth in respect to who we were and we had no idea no idea that um, us stating our claim would be met with such adversity well it's a new day dawning and Lee Iacocca said, where have all the leaders gone? Lee Iacocca, they're here now. Their children have risen up. Their, their mentees have taken their position. And regardless of what uniform they wear or what ideological platform they sit down under, we are all shouting with one voice saying we are here. We are here. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in Chicago on December the 1st. Um, again, uh, it's in Southside Chicago. I'll post the address to where we're going to be. And uh, there has been a very strong effort to put together a, a, a lot. I have a lot of meetings that, that, that entire five-day period of time. I'm going from Chicago all the way to Cincinnati. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be very good for me, like the, the amount of people that I'm going to be exposed to and the amount of conversations that I'm going to have um, for, for a position of both education and um, idea exchange. And I hope at the end of the t at the end of that time, I'm not I'm not I'm just, I know at the end of that time, our people will be better off for it. So stick with me for a while. Um, I'm going to try to be uh, very careful in what I say before I get down there. Then I'm not going to be careful anymore. <laughs> right now, I got to be careful because I I see that people are trying to pick words, they're trying to pick words out of your mouth and say things that you're not really saying. I just want to be careful because I want to have my best negotiation foot forward. Right? I want to be able to sit down at the table and negotiate some things and uh, have some agreements made where. Um, I haven't built I've said I've, I've said everything I had to say I brought everybody to the place where you should know what I have to say and um, I want to be I want to make sure that they know I'm coming to build a bridge right um, but we're not coming to get steamrolled under it we're coming to build a bridge and um, we have been the one standing on the other side of that water without access so that bridge should be built towards us all right, so I can, I'll say that as cryptic as I can. Have an amazing evening. I'm, I'm supposed to be on a, on a brother's show today, and I'm, I'm waiting for him to call me, but I'll, I'll see if I can share it. And um, 
We're going to talk to some more about this, all right? God bless you, everybody. Listen to me. You are your brother's keeper, and I'm your brother. And um, where we started isn't where we're going to finish. And, and we know the scripture. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And there's another one I'll add to it as I close. What they meant for evil, God meant for good. I'll talk to you later. It's Del K. Barrett, this is The Real Spiel.